Welcome back. Now, the president of Turkey, Recep Erdogan, says the terrorists who tried to remove him through a coup in 2016 are still active in Nigeria. Recall that Erdogan had in 2016 accused allies of a renowned cleric, Fertila Gulen, who owned Turkish schools and hospitals across Nigeria, of sponsoring the coup. Now, Turkish envoy in Nigeria, Hakan Gakil, had at that time called on Buhari to close the Turkish schools and hospitals in Nigeria, belonging to a group of private Turkish investors who are inspired by the philosophy of the Hizmet movement. The Nigerian government had, however, rejected the proposal causing tension between both countries. In what appears to be a reconciliatory move, Erdogan told Buhari that his administration would share intelligence with Nigerian authorities. Now joining us to discuss this is Michael Nketiah, an international relations analyst. Well, many thanks for joining us on PLUS Politics and PLUS TV Africa. Michael. Thanks for having me. All right, uh, let's start with the development that happened since um, 2016, and um, it has actually spiraled now into 2021. 20, uh, it's been five years uh, since the attempted coup, and uh, the Turkish president on a two-day uh, visit to Nigeria you know, mentioned to the fact that uh, these alleged terrorists uh, who you know, tried to overthrow him you know, are still in Nigeria. What does this really tell about um, you know, the dimension that uh, terrorism has taken in Nigeria? Well, the categorization of people that others may consider as political dissidents in, in Nigeria as terrorists by the Turkish government is a bit problematic. It needs emphasizing that in 2016, when there was some form of military uprising against the government of President Tariq Erdogan, Recep Tariq Erdogan, the Islamic cleric who is based in the United States of America was primarily blamed for the uprising in Turkey. So categorizing or terming people who want a change in government, people who want to see a new form of leadership in Turkey, categorizing such an individual or such group of people as terrorists is a bit problematic to me. Second, based on current security challenges in Nigeria, I have my doubts that the government of President Muhammad Buhari would harbor or, or give a, provide a safe haven for people who are also perceived to be engaging in other forms, in activities that are likely to destabilize a major country like Turkey. You, you, currently, we are all witnesses to the instability in Nigeria as a result of the agitations by the Yoruba movement. Oh, uh, Michael, if I have to butt in, sorry if I just have to butt in, just to understand you better right now. Invariably, what you are saying right now is that uh, what the president of um, Turkey, Recep Erdogan, is saying uh, does not hold water in as much as uh, he has said that his own country is uh, in the battling with um, the throes of um, terrorism. And uh, I'm sure that if he is saying that they are still active in Nigeria, they might have some sort of intelligence report, or would you just say it should be outrightly dismissed? Well, I disagree with the president of Turkey or the Turkish government. I do not believe that those individuals, Turkish nationals who are in Nigeria, are terrorists. I believe that these people are political dissidents, people who want to see a change in government in Turkey. And I don't believe these people are terrorists. And it also needs clarifying that per what we are currently witnessing in Nigeria due to issues of insecurity, the threats posed by Boko Haram, separatist agitations by the Yoruba Nation movement, which was led by Sunday Boho and also the Biafra movement led by Nam Dikanu. I don't think the Nigerian government will provide a safe haven, haven for another individual group of individuals who are trying to also destabilize another country. That would have been a clear contradiction to the policy direction of the Buhari administration. Those people in Nigeria may disagree with the Turkish government. They may be fighting for a change in leadership in Turkey. But I do not believe that those people are terrorists. And I believe that the Nigerian government should not in any way hand those people over to the Turkish government. It needs emphasizing that the Turkish government has a poor human rights record when it comes to the prosecution 
of people who are perceived as enemies of the state or opponents of President, Re President Recep Tayyip Erdogan and basically handing these individuals over to the Turkish government would warrant the idea, the idea, indirect uh, death sentence. So I believe that they are not terrorists. The Nigerian government is not providing a safe haven for them. These are just ordinary political okay. incidents that needs protection. All right, uh, Michael, uh, still to be clear, so invariably the, the administration of President Mohamed Buhari, you know, is actually doing right, the right thing, you know, for not actually closing down the Turkish school, you know, after all the claims and allegations in 2016. Plus, you are saying that uh, those uh, who the president uh, of Turkey has termed, you know, terrorists are primarily, you know, political distance. Just to be clear, over time in Nigeria, you know, uh, uh, there has been call to name uh, to name you know those who perpetrate lots of violence uh, here in the country as um, terrorists. For instance, uh, you know insurgents, you know uh, bandits, as it were, and of course order you know criminals, you know that have terrorized the country in recent times. There have been renewed calls for the presidency, you know, to declare them terrorists. So if I may ask, you know, how do you differentiate who are political dissidents and of course terrorists a terrorist may be engaging in activities that threaten the sovereignty of a state either overthrowing the government engineering or orchestrating armed attacks financing armed attacks activities that intends to feel, to create an environment and condition of fear and panic but a political dissident is someone who is only interested in a change in government due to his or her disagreement with the current status quo or political leadership of his or her country. And such a dissident may be residing in another country due to perceived fear of reprisal attacks on his or her life. So political dissidents or activists are clearly different from terrorists. Political dissidents, they do not finance the act of terrorism. They do not finance, engineer, or engage or contract people to engage in armed attacks that threaten the sovereignty and the security of a state. All those things are, are clearly the activities and modus operandi of terrorists and political dissidents are only interested in change in the political landscape or status quo of his or her country without any resort to armed violence or confrontation. All right, uh, still, the president of um, Turkey, that's uh, Recep Erdogan, actually called for cooperation in the fight against um, terrorism between um, both countries so that there could be some sort of um, success. But in your opinion, looking at all that has happened, do you see a strained relationship, you know, you know moving forward between Nigeria and Turkey? Well, in the last decade, since 2011, continuously, Turkey has been a major trading partner of Nigeria. And I believe that it serves the interest of both governments and states to collaborate, jaw jaw, in finding lasting solutions to these uh, little bit of misunderstandings or standoff. I believe that there is, a, if you look at the geographical position of Turkey, it falls right between the borders of Europe. It serves as a bridge between Europe, Asia, and the Middle East. Its neighbor, neighboring countries like Syria, Iraq, Syria and Iraq, even Yemen, all these countries are facing challenges of terrorism, issues of insecurity. Nigeria also has its own security issues. The threat of Boko Haram is still real. The threat of bandits, of, of uh, heads, armed headsmen, the threat of uh, agitations by the Biafra movement and even the Yoruba nation agitations. Both countries face similar mm. threats, and I believe it is in the interest of the Buhari administration and also the Turkish government to draw jaw, bring amicable solution to this impasse, and find ways and means to cooperate militarily to confront the threat of terrorism in both countries. You should note that Turkey currently is a major manufacturer of military accoutrements and weapons, and the Nigerian government can count on the expertise of the Turkish government with regards to the supplies of ammunitions, 
tactical combat deployments and training to, to, to confront the threat of jihadism and terrorism in All right. Nigeria. And these are avenues that the Nigerian government can explore. Beyond that, trade presents a wonderful opportunity. Turkey continues to be a major trading partner for majority of African countries, and the Nigerian government can build a solid trade relation All right. with that. Yes. All right, thank you so much, Michael Nketia, uh, International Affairs Analyst. We do appreciate your time and, of course, your thought and all of your input on the show today. You are welcome. Well, moving on, uh, right now we'll take a clip showing Nigerians reacting to the over 400 million naira budgeted for the presidency and vice president in 2022. And afterwards, I'll be giving you my take. I can say the money is much compared to Nigerian condition now. Because an average man, how can you compare that such, such amount of money with the feeding of average man in Nigeria? That amount of money can feed over 2 million people in this country. So it is allocated to the presidency alone. So the money is arbitrary. The, the money is even too much. It's too much for the presidency to feed himself and the, and the vice presidency president. Without such amount, it's too much. Once of us I cannot feed themselves by in another um, 15, 15 era, you know, 15 era as of, as of uh, this morning. So uh, it doesn't make sense. I think it's ridiculous. It's, it's ridiculous. If you break down to how much they eat on a daily, and you know that uh, they are just being annoying. I'm sure Nigerians are tired of hearing of these things on a daily. So. But the truth is, what can we do? We just vote them out, that's what they say, but does our vote really count? All right, uh, the voice of the people there. And here is my take. In 2020, the National Bureau of Statistics reported that about 83 million people lived below the poverty line in Nigeria. And we know that that number has probably gone up, saying that the pandemic caused many to lose their sources of livelihoods. Now the country and the rest of the world is going through a recession and economic challenges. A lot of Nigerians are forced to live lives that are below the normal standard of living. Now every time the president shows up to give a speech or an address to the citizens, he urges them to persevere, promising that Nigerians would be better if they endured the hard times a little longer. But if Nigerians are forced to bear the perilous time, why not the president and his vice? Now, in 2016, 103 million was for the president's feeding, while that of the vice president's feeding gapped 24 million. Still a bit high, but fair. Our economy was relatively better. But from 127 million to over 450 million now in just about five years, that's over a 100% increase. Nigerians are already tolerating the harsh economy. But this amount is insensitive to the needs of Nigerians, many political pundits call for a decrease in the cost of governance. Can the president not hear us? Can our leaders not hear us? It is time to listen to us. Be the leaders we voted for in 2019, they should listen to us. It's high time these monies are channeled back to solve hunger in the land. And the meeting between the Turkish president and Nigerian officials is one of the best things that happened lately. It shows that the president has been warned, and to be forewarned is to be forearmed. The federal government seems to be sympathetic to terrorists. It should sit tight and stop paying lip service to issues of security. Let President Buhari, as a matter of urgency, seek foreign assistance, or Nigerians may just be captured by terrorists. And that's my take. Many thanks for being a part of the show. Plus, politics returns same time tomorrow. I am Justin Akadonye. Bye for now.